Okay, we're going to try this again. I uh, tried to record this before and uh, it didn't work. Uh, the audio was off. So uh, we're going to kind of start over here. So uh, the question is, how does resolution when burning an image affect the outcome? So uh, we have a logo here, it's a family crest, and we're just going to bring it into Lightburn. It happens to be a ping, and uh, we're just going to kind of play with this file here. So if we take and set this to burn, um, and we burn it as an image, not as a vector, uh, not as a line, uh, it's going to have a certain level of pixelization, if you will, when this is burned as an image. Uh, and that is affected by uh, your settings and image settings. So this is your line interval and DPI. This relates specifically to the number of dots or pulses per square inch that that uh, image is being burned at. So that laser, if this is set at 100 dpi, is going to hit at least 100 dots per inch. Uh, and if you raise that, uh, say to 300, it's going to increase the number of dots per inch to 300. So uh, it's going to be a much more detailed, much more fine uh, burn. Uh, that said, it might be too much, and it might actually add too much uh, lasering to a specific area so it might actually black everything out. You have to find the number that works for the substrate you're burning to. Uh, a little trial and error. You can go on forums or any place that has information where people have tested it before and see. Uh, but it's all going to be dependent on your laser, whether you've got a 20 watt, a 15 watt, a 10 watt, whatever, uh, in different models. So you're going to need to kind of test that out. But that is where the image quality is set. In addition, you can change the angle at which that uh, laser is scanning across the image and you can change that scan angle as such. Sometimes you may want to do that to avoid any vertical or horizontal banding in very dark areas of an image. So if you were to set this at zero uh, and have it burn, you may actually see those lines as it goes across and scans across. Uh, so again, a bit of trial and error, but uh, Generally, if you have something very linear, you may want to choose a different angle that doesn't match exactly like that. Um, so getting back to this DPI and line interval, the best way to show what happens with the quality of that is to actually look at two images, one uh, that is set that way and one that is set the other. So this uh, image here is uh, much different than the image to the right. And um, you can kind of take a look at both of these together a bit more wide open here and see that there is there is a difference right so there is much more detail on the one to the right which is set at 300 dpi you can see that here and it's 946 pixels by 1280 pixels so this image is uh, obviously not equivalent but something similar to the level of detail you might see when you're burning an image at a higher uh, dpi or a smaller line interval. This one is set at 100 dpi or ppi um, and it's a much smaller image 315 by 427 pixels. So you'll see that there is much less detail in that image than in the other when you compare them side by side and that will relate to how they burn. Um, the less detail you have the more rough that is going to be. Um, so uh, I hope that explains some of it. Um, again, you'll have to do some trial and error, but uh, that DPI affects the amount of detail you're going to get. Okay, so that said, one way to avoid all of that and not have to deal with it is to trace the image. We've done this before in another video. So uh, the way you trace that image is to uh, simply right click on it, make sure that you have a nice contrasty image and you can change the cutoff or the amount of detail that it's picking up on and the threshold to where it suits uh, you know, your image. And then once you click OK, it generates, you'll see the marching ants. And then you can actually turn off the image layer and you'll be left with a nice and vectorized uh, logo. And so if you zoom in on this, you know, it, it looks like it may have some uh, pixelization, but the way vectors work is they're mathematical equations or formulas, really, that have no uh, limit of detail. So the more you zoom in, the more you'll recognize this thing does not have any loss of detail. Uh, you can continue to zoom and zoom and zoom, 
uh, and it will not lose the detail. So it's a very fine tuned uh, option. Um, you can set that to either cut just a line, which would make it look like it does in this area here. You can set it to fill, which will take each of these areas and make them dark or black. And that again is where you get this line interval. Uh, it's, while it's different than how an image burns, it will uh, affect how many lines this uses to fill in those black areas. The best way I can show you that how that works is to hit the preview. So this is set at uh, fill image here, or fill the lines, and when you click on it, it'll show you it's going to be pretty dark. Those lines are 300 uh, dpi, so they're going to be very, very, very close together. Um, and as you see here, very, very close together means exactly point. 0.085 millimeters apart. If we change this then to 100 lines per inch, you'll see that that number also increases. So the space in between each line or burn of the laser is going to be 0.254 millimeters. We want to see what that looks like. We go to the preview and you'll see it's a much less detailed image. Depending on what your image you're burning, it may be just fine. However, for this, you'll see that it's going to be it's going to be pretty jagged, and I think those lines are a bit too far apart from one another. Again, it depends on the viewing distance and the material, but um, that's how you make the adjustments in here. In addition, you can do the same thing. When it fills, you can change the angles. Uh, I tend to like offset fill a little bit better because it burns a heck of a lot faster, um, although there are some downsides uh, to this. So let's just set this at 200 and see what we wind up with in the preview area. Um, again, we'll give us a good idea of that. So you'll see it's a, it follows the inside path and just continues to trace the shape until it gets to the center, moves on to the next shape, follows the path, and then moves on to the next shape. Uh, sometimes this is a much, much more efficient way uh, of filling in an image. Uh, for instance, this one would take 25 minutes to burn uh, this offset fill. If you do the same thing for a fill, you go into the settings and you choose you know, 200. Uh, what you're going to wind up is not seeing 25 minutes, but 54, because it's going to be much slower. Uh, it's got to scan across this a number of times, and that's actually not quite as fast as just following the contour of the shapes. Uh, so that's just a different method. Um, in, in addition to that, you guys know we probably do fill and line, which does an outline around it and then fills it. Uh, and when you do that, there is another option to choose the speed and power of that line once it's applied afterwards. So this would be your settings for the fill. And this would be for the line that's done after the fill. And if you look at that, you can see how that would be. Again, that's like an hour. So that's uh, quite a bit longer than the offset fill um, to burn. If you were to do burn at a similar speed, let's just change that to be this apples to apples and see what we would be looking at in burning an image. Sometimes it can be faster, or sometimes it can be slower, depending on how that image looks. So this one would actually take an hour and 21 minutes. So that's gonna be a heck of a lot longer uh, to burn. And that's because of the way that it's, it's processing it. It's processing it as an image, not a vector. All right, hope that's clear as mud for you. Uh, thanks for watching.